brought to the stage with a warm welcome. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, so let's welcome to the stage a moment of inspiration. Please join me in welcoming to this stage Denise Michelle. I've been good. I knew that I wouldn't. I've been good. I knew that I wouldn't. So good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am so thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for this invitation. Well, one year ago, yes, I was here in this room, and let me share with you where I was when I met you, Mary. I was teaching yoga full-time and a massage therapist, and it looked like I was living a dream life. I taught yoga on the beach, I made my own schedule. It looked like I had total freedom to a lot of people. But what they didn't know was that I was struggling. And I was stuck in a cycle that started from a surf accident five years ago that not only split my face open, but it split me open mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. That led me into a massive healing process that was extremely painful to really look at my life and really see where I was supposed to be going. I knew I was supposed to be doing more. I wasn't able to take those clients into the place that I knew I wanted to because I didn't have the tools to do that. And I was financially drained. I was burning out constantly. I was working seven days a week for those five years and I was going through the deepest bouts of depression of my life. And depression hadn't been new to me, but this was life and death depression where I was constantly thinking about suicide. Oh. It was, yeah, it was bad. And, you know, what shifted for me was in January of 2018, I was lying in bed with the flu in 102 fever, in the dark, weeping, and I was completely alone. I realized I had pushed everybody out of my life, and I felt confused, I felt lost, and I didn't know where I was supposed to go and what I was supposed to do. I knew I wasn't living my purpose, and I didn't have much more to keep going. And my best friend at the time, who had a mentor, she was really worried about me, and she said, you know, I think it's time for you to find a mentor. And I... <laughs> let's say, resisted her invitation to that. And, but something rang true. Something rang true when she said that. And that night, I made a plea to spirit. And I said, okay, either you kill me tonight and you take me home, or you show me the way because I don't know where the bleep to go. <laughs> <laughs> and two weeks later, I was led to my first Dream Builder Live right in this room. And I sat in the very back row, and I was so spiritually weak at that time that I could barely clap, much less dance, and I love to dance. And I told my friend who invited me, you know, I'm gonna stay for one day, but I can't guarantee that I'm gonna stay the entire weekend. And at the end of the first day, something shifted. I began to feel alive again. By the end of day two, I found myself in the back talking to Matt, handing in my enrollment form for Brave Thinking Masters, wondering, what am I doing? And that terrified me. And then I got the calling to go to the coach certification presentation. And when I went, I was literally shaking in my boots because I knew this was it. This was my calling. This is what I was meant to do. But I had a problem. <laughs> I had zero dollars to invest. I had just filed for bankruptcy. I used what little money I had for, for the deposit for Brave Thinking Masters. Wasn't sure how this was going to happen, but the desire was burning in me so deeply that I had to make way. I had to find a way, and I did. And after a series of initiations, the money showed up. And I was in the March training of last year. So Mary, I think this is a great time for us to dance across the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was then, this is now. That was then and this is now. So I became a Dream Builder coach last March and it has been quite a journey. I dove into the work. 
I didn't want my investment to go to waste. I put a lot on the line for it. And I was in the after support program, so I was on all the calls and almost always had a question. I, I, I was really into this work because I looked at the online training center, I looked at what they were giving us, and I was like, oh my God, they are seriously giving this to us on a silver platter. Why wouldn't I utilize this information? And I started learning the tools and I was showing up and I was playing full out and I would fall down and I would get up again. And I, I slowly started to learn, well, how not to burn out by organizing my time properly. I learned how selling is serving because I didn't want to feel like a used car salesman. That was just really weird to me. My dad was in sales. And by the end of my first six weeks being a coach, I was in service to 10 clients. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was cool about that was after, as the months went on and I'm working with Dream Builder, I found myself having another burning desire and a new dream emerged. And I was like, I really want to be a life mastery consultant. I know that's coming up in September. I don't know how this is going to happen. So in September, I packed my bags for six days, still not knowing how I was going to find the investment. And while I was here in training, I found it and was able to stay those extra three days. And ever since then, it's just skyrocketed. I'm working with VIP clients. I'm now breaking into Fortune 500 companies, which I'm really excited about because I really feel like they are the influence in this world. And if we are going to make change in the world, it's got to happen from the top. And these are the tools to do it. Um, in the last year, it's been 12 months now. So I have done 10 vision workshops, and I have a picture here showing one of my vision workshops. Yeah. And I've, thank you. <laughs> and I have done 85 strategy sessions. I've been in service to 25 clients. And for the first time in my life, <sighs> I have reached the six figure mark. I made $111,000 in the last year. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my gosh, you guys are going to make me cry. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, you know, yes, okay, the money, the money has been wonderful. It's afforded me to stay in training and keep going deeper and going bigger. But what's so wonderful is that I'm living my purpose. I live on purpose. I get up every day and I feel motivated and I, I feel inspired and I am changing people's lives. And this is the biggest gift that we can ever give anybody is our love and our care. So... The, the next stage for me is, was the thought to travel. I really, really wanted to travel, and I couldn't afford to do that <laughs> before. And last May, I was able to visit my grandmother, who was turning 95 years old, and surprise her for her birthday. And when she opened the door and she saw me standing there, she had tears in her eyes, and I had tears in my eyes. And it was just one of the most precious moments that... I have ever had with her, I don't know how long she was going to be here. And it was hurting my heart to know that I wasn't going to be able to spend time with her before she left this world. I have a photo of here of me, my grandma. <laughs> yeah, she's 95. I know, right? She looks amazing. <laughs> and I also had another burning desire was that I started dreaming up, well, if I can coach from anywhere, because I couldn't teach yoga from anywhere, I can do massage from anywhere, I wonder what it would be like to go international. And for the first time in four years, over the summer, I went to Costa Rica on a surf yoga retreat. And so my, my schedule consisted of, I would go do your yoga session, and then I would go surf, and then I would go and coach my clients from the jungle. <laughs> I was like, that is such an awesome feeling. I can't believe this is my life. And I have a picture of our, of our retreat here. Yeah. All my peeps playing. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's interesting was this burning desire to travel. It's now my new normal. This year alone, and we're in March, I've gone on a five-day road trip, I've been to London, I've been to Hawaii, and I've coached in all those places. Yeah. That's a wonderful life, star on you. <laughs> right? It's looking good on me. So I have to say, Mary, that I am so grateful for you creating LMI and following your calling. And I'm grateful to our mentors and this faculty. I'm grateful to this community because this community has seriously been my rock. I would not be here today if I did not have the LMI family backing me to help propel me forward. And so I'm so thankful for your support. But most of all, Mary, I'm thankful for you, for your courage, for you being my mentor. But most of all, I am thankful for your love. You've got that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Denise Michelle. Thank you, Mary. Beautiful pictures, too. Yeah. Okay, thank you.